What's up, guys? Welcome to Brothers and Beer Podcast. Brothers and Beer. Abbreviated podcast. We're only drinking one beer today. I feel like this mic is really high. I don't know why. It's not the mic that's hot. Oh, I'm not high. I might be a little intoxicated. I feel like my mic is now perfect. Perfect mics. I'm going to wrap my <clears throat> arms around the mic. We're not going to look at the screen today. We're going to look at you guys. Well, it's going to be hard to do, though, because... We are live streaming this at the same time. For those of you that don't know, we do live stream. This video that we're making right now is for YouTube. We're making the YouTube portion of the video because we are skipping the podcast this week. And next week and the week after. Oh, you're not going to do it without me? I'm going to probably, I'm going to try, but it's funny how I'm not motivated if you're not here. Like you said, you weren't doing it today. So I just was like, eh. <laughs> But it's not, no, first of all, Kenny didn't say he wasn't doing it today. We couldn't do it yesterday because I did finally get my tattoo. If you can see it, and it hurts like hell, so. And then, so, we were going to do it today, but Kenny's beer, Kenny took his beer to Indiana. Had to take my, my beer to Indianapolis to drop it off for the National Homebrew Competition. Right, and so, and then tonight's a big UFC night and poker night. Yep. And so, and we I had noticed, to make a decision. I did notice that the one person in chat right now is Jason. So What's it's, up, Jason? it's kind of his fault. We're not doing the podcast too. <laughs> and we're going to blame it on Jason. We're going to blame it on Jason. But no, I'm going to, I mean, to be completely honest, I'm burnt out. I mean, I'm, well, yeah. I've been all over the hell and back today. I've went through a half a tank of gas in my truck, driving from my house to Indianapolis, Indianapolis to Lebanon, Lebanon in the middle of town. I just, it's my fault. I'll take the blame. I don't no, care. No, it no. ain't happening today. That's why I said I'm not going to give you blame for this, though. I just think that stuff, you know, shit happens. And every it now does. And then. It does. But we are going to do a beer. It, we're going to do a beer. We're going to go ahead and live stream the beer. And we're going to, this is going to be our YouTube video. This is going to be the YouTube video. And this is going to be the podcast. So. And this is the podcast. So you better fucking like it. Because it's we, all you get. We were supposed to drink this beer last week. We were supposed to drink this beer last week. This is Robinson's Trooper Premium British Beer out of Cheshire, England, created by Iron Maiden. Rock on. You guys know who Iron Maiden is. Um, Some people. Prior to doing this podcast, right before we actually started, I said, to be honest, I couldn't tell you one song by Iron Maiden. And he said, Trooper. That's one of their songs. Didn't know that. <laughs> Um, but this they were is... a big band in the 80s. Yeah, yeah. They were a big metal band, but they weren't like hair metal. You know what I mean? They weren't like Molly Crew or Def Leppard. But Lepard. they also weren't death metal. They weren't death metal, no. So, I mean, I think, so, I mean, we've talked about music a little bit on here, and you're you're much more in tune with music than I am. I like music, but it's just not, it's not that important to me. But I like Metallica. And I said one time that I can't stand metal. And somebody was like, but you like Metallica. I was like, that's fucking rock and roll. That's not metal. Actually, man. When I think metal, I think death metal. The rah, 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 rah. I can't do that shit. Like, if you're going to sing, sing. If you're going to play instruments, play, don't bark and growl into a fucking microphone and try and pass that shit off as music. <laughs> I put, uh, if you guys look up Cookie Monster Death Metal. I put a Cookie Monster death metal video on YouTube. It's him singing, you know, just in Cookie Monster voice. That's what it sounds like. But if you if if you were around back in, it was like it was the like 83, 84 when Metallica hit the scene, if you want to say. Actually, it was kind of underground because it was people were probably had earlier tapes. than that, wasn't it, though? Well, by the time it got to Dayton, they, I mean, they started maybe late 79, 80, somewhere around there. But by the time we started hearing about it up here, that shit was never played on the radio, and we didn't have the internet or nothing. No, hell no. So you know, you, I got it from a uh, friend, a, a girl that came to our school. She she came, she moved to Dayton from Huber, and her, um, I think it was her stepbrother, her his dad lived in Connecticut, and then he somehow he had a, a tape. Well, and I was down in the base of her basement one day. And he's like, "Man, you want this tape? I don't like this band at all." And it was Metallica's "Ride the Lightning," and I'd never heard it before. And so I put it in, and I loved the music, but I hated the vocals. You know, that rah, rah, rah. That was what it sounded like to me then, because we hadn't heard... Well, yeah, there probably wasn't too many bands back then that were doing any, the growling and barking bullshit. There wasn't anything like that yet. And I'm sitting there listening to Battle Ray. But then Iron Maiden, though, was around then, and they had a different type of singing. 
But their stage show, I saw them. At, I saw them once. They were they were badass. Okay. That's who's on the on the cap. I don't know if you guys can see the cap. Is Probably that not? Is that the same guy? Yeah, that's that Eddie. Had? Okay. So if you can see the cap, the little badass. figure on the on the bottle, that's Eddie. He's a he was their stage monster, I guess. Yeah, he was like twelve foot tall. Okay. A big puppet thing, but it was badass. But, but that was back then, though. I feel like I can't figure out what to do with this mic. It's, an, it's just in your way. It's just like, just hi just guys, how are you? Yeah, I'm become one with the caress mic. it. It's your no. mic. I'll never touch it again. Is that too much? Yeah. If I put it over here, I'm good until I talk to you. Whatever. Let's just fucking do this. So this is an English, a premium. This is a premium British beer. I don't know what that means. Um. It's out of Cheshire, England. It's 4.7% alcohol by volume. It's probably going to be similar to a... No, it's not. An English mild. I don't think so. Like a... It's definitely an ale. It's not going to be super bitter. Hmm. It tastes to me like I lost something on the trip from it's England a, to here. It's an English mild. It's, very, it's, it's not a very complex flavor. No, it tastes you almost can definitely, like rotten <laughs> apples or something. You can definitely tell it's an ale. It's not a lager. It's not been lagered by any means. <clears throat> um, you can pick up the, the malt notes way more than you can the hops. There's oh, that's of, what I'm tasting, malt. Yeah, there's not a lot of bitterness to it at all. No. You're not tasting any hop character, hop aroma, no bitterness. It's a it's a typical English mild. I mean, it's a, it's a good beer. I mean, it's... It's an okay beer. I mean, there's nothing there's nothing special about it. This isn't a beer that I would go to a bar and go, hey, you know what? You know what? Give me one of those Iron Maiden Troopers. Well, the thing is, though, is there are a lot of people that would just because it's an Iron Maiden Trooper. <clears throat> is Iron Maiden really that popular still? Well, there are a lot. You know, the, the people my age that can still grow hair. I mean, this is 2019. Is it 2019? Oh, there's people in here. Yeah, Connie says you look like you're losing weight. Good for you. It's just my arm is swollen. <laughs> so I look different now. I am, in fact, not losing weight. I pretty much don't give a fuck anymore. I'm going anymore. to win this challenge. That's all I'm saying. He's going, I'm to win this. My... He's going to win this challenge because I'm not doing anything. That's like uh, I, I, every year I want the Browns to beat the Steelers. But at, I have other Browns fans that will root for Ben Roethlisberger to get hurt so we can have a chance to beat the Steelers. And I'm like... I don't want that. I want Ben to be there. If I if we're I want to be good enough to beat the Steelers. So not, you're, you're not you're not going to be happy winning this challenge if yeah, I don't put in any effort. Right. <clears throat> I see. I see. She says your face is thinner. It's the angle. <laughs> we got the camera way up high, tilted way down. <clears throat> we learned from Instagram. We need a filter on here where we have bunny rabbit ears. <laughs> I can do that. Can you? Yeah. I was kidding. <laughs> So, guys, if you didn't notice in the title, um, we are recording. This is the recording of the YouTube video, and we're not doing a podcast this week. This is going to be short. It's going to be one beer, and we're going to call it from there. We will have a YouTube video up. It's going to be this video. So I hope you guys enjoy the time while you're here, but this is all you get this week. I'm also going to put this out as the podcast, too, though. That's fine. That's fine. Just so people want, people do want to hear your voice, whether it's for a half hour or two hours. They want to hear you. I'm not all that concerned if those 12 people don't get to hear my They're voice not, for one th week. There's two. There's not 12 of them. Oh, two. <laughs> so what are we talking about? Um, today's theme of our podcast is uh, dumbasses. Dumbasses. I like it. Stupid people. Right. They're everywhere. They are. All They're you have everywhere. to do is look around you. Yep. I'm sitting in a room with one right now. <laughs> Actually, okay, since I just got this tattoo, uh, that cause we want to talk about a stupid, we're talking about dumbass people, right? Have you heard about the lady that got a tattoo on her eyeball? Oh, yeah. And it got infected. And, and now she, she's losing her eyeball. She's going to lose her eyeball, and she's wanting to warn people. Now she's going on tour to warn people not to get tattoos on their eyeballs. Trust me. Not a warning I need. We Didn't don't plan need on your, it. <laughs> we don't need your dumbass to tell us not to stick a needle with ink in our eye. Right? That's a fucking moron. That's what we're talking about today. Those kind of people. That's actually getting more and more popular. Tattoos on your eyeball? <clears throat> There's people that are actually, they're getting UV ink. So when they put it on there, you can't see it. But if you go to like a club or whatever and you get in a black light, then it shows up on your eyeball. Uh, so you can, when you go uh, 
bowling. Yeah, when we go cosmic bowling. Cosmic bowling. You can see my tat on my eyeball. <laughs> I guess that's not the cool thing to do with the black lights. It's what do they call that uh, when you're eating Molly and you go, oh, raving. Raving. Yeah. Is that still yeah. a thing? I have no I've idea. It was a thing. A rave. It was a thing when I was at Ohio State. I oh, wasn't. Yeah. They would, Did you go to they would, I went to one. They took over this abandoned warehouse down in downtown Columbus. It was a like a four story warehouse, and like each story of the warehouse was a different type of mind fuckness. I would love that. <clears throat> like the first floor was just all the potheads. They were all just hanging out, smoking pot, listening to chill music. Next floor up was like, I don't know, like doosh, people doosh, doosh, doosh. doing cocaine and oh. just random shit. And then the next That's floor up was where the DJ was and all those people were tripping out and sweating on each other and well, screwing it, screwing in the corner. And yeah, okay. yeah. I like four, two and it sounds like I might like four, three. I can't remember what, I don't know if I ever made it to the fourth floor. The cops broke in. Oh really? Yeah. The cops showed up. Oh, that sucks. They don't like people having a good time. <clears throat> Hell no, they don't. <laughs> And so you had some dumb, dumb people. We got all kinds of dumb people to talk about. Today. Yeah, so this morning on my way to Indianapolis, I was actually listening to the radio, and they brought up – it's a show on ESPN. It's Marty and McGee, and they do this thing called Hillbilly Headlines. And it's funny because they brought up a couple different headlines, and for the life of me, I can't remember the one that I really wanted to talk about that was super funny. But the one that kind of stuck in my head was Huntsville, Alabama. Two people got in a fight. At a hibachi buffet. If you don't know what a hibachi buffet is, it's it's like a it's a Chinese Japanese style restaurant. It's usually a Chinese buffet, but they also have like a hibachi grill in the back where you put all the shit in a bowl and you give it to them and they cook it up on a flat top griddle. Well, this was crab leg night, and I don't know how you feel about crab legs. Actually, I do. You, you can't stand them, but anyway, I like crab legs. They stink. They smell. I, disgusting. however, would not fight somebody over crab legs. What? Apparently, they've been waiting for crab legs for like five to ten minutes or something like that. And the funniest part about this is the story was being told by the police officer that was having dinner there that night. <laughs> so he was already there. So these people, a man and a woman, um, were waiting on the crab legs for five to ten minutes, and somehow a fight ensued. And Shaniqua, that was actually the name that they gave in the report, um, they were using tongs. As like swords. They were like fencing swords fighting with tongs. <laughs> and and Shaniqua happened to slice. Shaniqua. Slice you, is that real or are you making that up? No, that's what they said the name was in the report. I have no idea if that was her actual name. but okay. Sorry, that's sliced funny. Sliced dude's head open with a set of tongs over some crab legs. <laughs> crab legs. Oh, God, man. People are just fucking ridiculous. When I worked at Red Lobster, <clears throat> it was my job to throw the... Crab legs in the in the steamer to steam them. And you mean I to swear, thaw them? Well, yeah, they were frozen. They were already cooked and everything. And just but we throw them in a the steamer to steam. It's like just <clears throat> and then they were done. It's like a, yeah. And so I'm steaming these crab legs, man, uh, all day long, and they they stink. These are disgusting creatures. I don't know how anybody eats this. Garbage. I love crab legs. And the thing is, like. There was like a one day, the one night that was so busy. I was endless shrimp night, so I also I had to fry the shrimp and I have to steam the crab legs, and that's my job. And I'm getting orders yelled in my ear, and I'm doing all this work. And there was a set of crab legs that I had left in the steamer like eight times. I I forgot they were back. So there. they're like super steamed at this. Oh, point. they were gushy. They were they turned to mush, man. It was just disgusting. It was all dripping out all over. It was so bad, man. You can't put those on a plate. Oh, I'm sure Red Lobster does it all the time. <laughs> I put that them in the trash. I wouldn't have served that. Then the other dumb story that I heard, it, it wasn't somebody getting in trouble or getting in a fight or anything like that, but uh, and a, a woman called 911 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, somewhere in Minnesota. <clears throat> it's been super freaking cold this winter up there. She called 911 because she was afraid that this gentleman who was standing outside of this building with no cold coat on and hugging a pillow was uh, overexposure to the weather. So she called 911 or whatever, and the cops showed up. And uh, it happened to be a cardboard cutout of some, <laughs> like, super CEO of some company. And this is my pillow guy. I don't know who it was. But um, he actually retweeted the story and just put, like, the shaking my head emoji thing. But the story's funny because it was like, 
We can't blame the woman for calling the cops. The man was standing out in sub-zero temperatures with no jacket on holding a pillow. She probably didn't want to approach him under concerns that he might be mentally deranged. I'm like, how fucking realistic is this cardboard cutout? No doubt, man. Come like, on. God. So, yeah, that's the that's the two she stupid funny stories. called the cops on the My Pillow guy. Speaking of white women <clears throat> calling the cops on people, did you hear about the, the lady in the dog park? I didn't want it to be true. I didn't want it to be true. I don't the think last, it was racist. The last thing I wanted to be was the guy that owned the dog that was humping her dog to be black. That was the last thing I wanted. There's another dog. They're at the dog park, and some dog's trying to hump her dog. She calls the damn cops on the guy. She told the guy to leave. You need to go. Now, fuck you, lady, first off. Well, I, but I was kind of, I mean, I'm kind of on her side. I've never been to a dog park, but I think it's your responsibility to control your dog. Oh, you definitely need to control your dog. But just to expect the guy to leave, like, at least, see, here's the problem. We weren't there. We weren't Nobody there. was there. The only story we got, we got was what the media decided to give us. Or what the 30-second video he Or the 30-second video that he took that occurred while she was calling the cops, not with what led up to it. Right. But, but I don't think she called the cops on him because he's black. They're saying it's another white person calling the cops over racism or whatever. She would no, call I, the cops on me if my dog was humping her dog. She's that woman would, yeah. People. That woman would. She's one of those yeah. people. I don't. No, 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 no. My, my comment was my, my comment when I said the last thing I wanted was right, for that man because, to be black. It's not because I think she's racist. It's because I didn't want this narrative to come out right. again. And they're doing. They keep pushing it. They're pushing it. Anything without a doubt. Close to that. Without a okay, doubt. Okay, so I got a couple dumb people. You want to hear this guy? Everybody yeah. know. Everybody's heard this guy so recently. This Tennessee man was accused of dipping his nuts in a customer's salsa before he delivered it to them. He's like a DoorDash or whatever. And he delivered food to this people's house another time, and they didn't tip him. They tipped him 87 cents. Oh, yeah. He got pissed, right? Yeah. So he, this time he, he dips his testicles in the salsa and then delivers it to him. That's and, not the worst part, though. But you're That's thinking, not what makes him an idiot. Yeah, you're thinking to yourself, well, how do they know? Did he leave nut prints in the salsa? How do you know? They found a they found a uh, they, found the they found a hair and they were like, oh, we're gonna get this tested. Oh, it's this guy's scrotum hair. Yeah, they didn't have to. They didn't have to call CSI. No, this guy took a video of him dipping his own testicles in the salsa and posted it on his Facebook. Maybe he thought they just wanted a little more salt. <laughs> That's some salty ass salsa, man. That's some <laughs> spicy salsa. So yeah, he gets caught, right? Like. Yeah, it, I don't know. Okay, so and but he's like, "This is what you get when you don't when you te- when you leave me eighty seven cents as a tip." That was his fucking caption of his post. Oh, we get your nuts. Fuck you. You get paid to do your job. The tip is right. It's well, like, actually, DoorDash doesn't. That's how they make all their money. They get paid the on tips, tips alone. Yeah, DoorDash oh, well, is I'll tips alone. DoorDash, well, you know, it's funny. We we talked about this as soon as you sent me that link. I, I read it out loud to Jen, and Jen's like, "I'm telling you, you know." I don't want to order food from them. Like, because you don't know it's some creep. Who it could right. be anybody going. Well, she was telling me another story. I can't remember if she said it was somebody at work or she heard the story somewhere. Or somebody on Facebook, they ordered DoorDash. And when they got their food, there was a fucking bed bug in it. Bed bugs. I, first of all, okay, now uh, it's already bad enough. No, you don't want to go out to eat because the people that are making your food already, you're already sketchy. Yeah. You know, you're already, if anybody goes to fast food, you're, you're, you can't tell me you're not a little bit worried about who the fuck's making your taco. That, I'm telling you, every single time I go to a fast food restaurant, I am always concerned whether or not that's really mayonnaise. <laughs> right. And now you're adding another element to this, a different person going to pick your shit up. And after this guy dipped his testicles, I'm not eating nut salsa. I don't want nut salsa. No. Can you put the, you have to put that on the order? Please no nuts in my salsa. I'm allergic to nuts. Can I get this salsa testicle free, please? Speaking of testicles. Oh, you got another testicle story. Well, that's the that what makes that guy a dumbass is he posted that himself. First of all, he's an asshole. Oh, he's an it. absolute asshole. Then he's a dumbass asshole because he posted on the, what do you think? Nothing nobody was gonna be like, hey. Do you think all his friends were gonna like, oh, that's so cool, dude? Like if you're one of your friends on your friend list posted that he had dipped his nuts in a pizza or what oh that reminds me. When I was it was like uh maybe 20 years ago or something. I don't know. Maybe dad or so. somebody will remember the story. It was ha- it happened in the Dayton area. There was a Domino's delivery driver was jerking off on pizzas. He would come on pizzas and deliver them. And finally, uh, somebody had wondered what the hell this was on their pizza. Yeah. 
That's way worse than the baloney story. God. <laughs> but this was really happening. He got arrested for. I don't trip. remember ordering ranch on my pizza. <laughs> Is this some Greek yogurt pizza? It looks like a snail sauce. I didn't know their Greek pizza came with yogurt. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> but we have other dumbass stories. But I want to break. I want to talk about this before you break into that one. Well, okay. no, go okay. ahead and break yeah, into no. Ahead. That one. That one fits well. We need to talk about that one right now. This story is from Delish dot com. It says Delish. <laughs> Just gonna throw that out there real quick. It came from Delish dot com. Just, just so you know. Delish. Delish dot com. Apparently, testicle flavored beer exists. And we have questions. That's the testicle flavored beer. It takes a lot of balls to chug this. It says apparently the guy from Tennessee found a new career. It takes a lot of balls to chug this beer. <laughs> You've heard of Rocky oh, Mountain Oyster? Oh God! Yes, yes, yes. This yes. is Rocky Mountain Oyster flavored beer. Why? That's all I want to know is why. Do people really like those things? Oh, I want to drive to Virginia to get the Lucky Charms beer before it goes out. That's the only place you can get it. So I think I'll go there. Yeah. Gone. You're yeah. going to drive to Virginia? It's not that far. It's I'd do it for you a, guys. It's at least a six or eight hour drive, right? I mean. I'd do it for you guys. Okay. Get on that shit. Unless I can order some on eBay. I doubt it. You'll pay 10 times as much. It's cheaper just to drive there. Okay. Craft beer flavors are maybe, possibly, definitely getting out of hand. One second, you're chuckling over the Lucky Charms-themed IPA and Blockbuster Ale, and the next, you're side-eyeing a testicle-flavored brew. Yep, Colorado-based Wink... Wink Poop? Wink Coop? Wink Coop. Wink... I like Wink Poop. <laughs> and Iceland's... And Iceland's. Steggy? Have both created their own Balls Beer. Balls, people. Balls Beer. Well, we just had a guy create ball salsa. It's true. I told you he got a new career. He's already out of jail, and he moved to Colorado and uh, created a fucking beer. That's a, that's an update. They did arrest that <clears throat> ball salsa guy. Good. Um, we're honestly wondering who the hell's drinking this. I wonder that shit about a lot of these beers. Who the hell's drinking this shit? I don't know. I would try a lot of different beers, but uh, <laughs> ball beer, not so much. Winkoop's Wink Brewing Company's Rocky Mountain Oyster Stout all started as an April Fool's joke. I can see that. Until people apparently started liking it? <laughs> they eat Rocky Mountain Oysters there. That's a, that's a thing. That's not I had actually contemplated moving to Colorado as a place to live. Not so much anymore. Now they offer it as an annual release. Yeah, Jason, we tried that on the podcast. What's that? The Graders beer. We've tried a couple different Graders, oh, yeah. Graders, Graders beers. Yeah, They've, they're uh, collaborations with the um, Braxton. Braxton. Yeah, yeah. seven point two percent alcohol, and they have a nice meaty flavor. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Get some balls deep in some beer, tonight, Kenny. I'm done drinking. Actually, Tennessee's probably closer. I can go and get some Rocky Mountain Oyster beer. That's in Colorado. Oh. The guy with the... You can go get some Rocky Mountain Oyster salsa. <laughs> Got in Tennessee. Then I can drive up to Colorado and get some beer. You can get some nut salsa, some nut beer, and then some Lucky Charms beer. Actually, I don't think we got to go all the way to Tennessee to get nut salsa. I could just dip mine in the salsa. I'm never eating salsa in your apartment. Plain and simple. It just sounds gross to me, like... I've never had a Rocky Mountain Oyster. I have no idea what they taste like. They might be delicious. I don't know. I can tell you this. I will never knowingly eat a Rocky Mountain Oyster or knowingly drink a Rocky Mountain Oyster beer. You? Dude, I won't eat fucking shrimp. I'm not eating balls. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> fucking. It takes a lot to get me to eat a piece of shrimp. Oh, Wow. I, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't know why. Like, I had another dumbass, but I don't even know if we can go there now. I mean, this is so disgusting. What the fuck is wrong with people, man? I got a dumbass that we can go to. Okay. This one was actually given to me by Melissa, our cousin. Oh, okay. She wanted me to use it as a Darwin, but I had to inform her that you can't use it as a Darwin if somebody doesn't die. So uh, this actually happened really close to home in West Carrollton, Ohio. It's literally like 
seven minutes up the road from here. Um, a woman was, this happened Thursday night, I think, Wednesday, Thursday night, something like that. A woman was driving in her car, paying attention to her GPS. She was going somewhere. I don't know. And I don't know how many of you drive somewhere and have a GPS and they'll tell you like, turn right in a thousand feet or turn right in a quarter mile, turn right now. Well, apparently her GPS I don't know if it was like railroad tracks and then road. Her GPS had said, take the next right or turn right now or something along those lines. And she turned on to the railroad tracks. Okay. I don't know if you guys realize this, but <laughs> railroads, the, the actual rails are pretty fucking tall. Yeah. There's a reason why trucks, when they're working on railroads, they actually have like train wheels on their vehicle that they use because they will get stuck they will get stuck on the tracks so this woman turns onto the tracks and gets stuck <clears throat> can't get her car out tries to get her car out by herself all of a sudden a train's coming fucking trains coming down the tracks right how what's the fucking law you know it takes like a mile for a train to stop or oh, some yeah. shit like that so this woman obviously bails out of her car and she stands there and watches this train just you know bash into her vehicle so I had to tell Melissa that we couldn't use it as a Darwin because Darwin. she lived, but it's definitely, what the fuck were you thinking? Do you not know how GPS works? And why would you even think that you could turn on to a railroad track? Yeah, don't you have to, but I mean, are you just blindly <clears throat> turn left here? You have to, because I have never went across a railroad crossing that I looked and went, that looks like a road. Right. Like, what the fuck is wrong with people? <laughs> this is fucking crazy, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. People are nuts. I wonder if she had like a fucking Tom Tom up there while she was a Tom Tom surfing. That's an old ass well, reference. Well, whatever. Magellan Tom Tom. Pick your fucking GPS. She had some old ass GPS up on her windshield while she's on her phone texting her whatever, not paying attention. It's like turn left, and she goes whoop. That had to be what happened. It's the only thing that makes sense. Nobody's that dumb, right? Well, everybody's that dumb. I mean, we're, we live in a world full of fucking dummies. It's true. Dummies. Now, the, the story I'm going to tell <clears throat> is, I think it's morbidly funny. It's definitely morbid. It's, I don't even, I don't even know if you could call it funny. It's definitely morbid and it's definitely a, Dumbass? what the fuck were you thinking, you idiot? Okay. This was, this happened in Florida. <clears throat> There were a lot of hurricanes. I'm not sure what year it was, but it had to be before Tom Toms, because uh, the woman that worked at this insurance company well, had called her friend and got her to MapQuest, where she was going. I don't know if you guys remember, remember MapQuest. Map Quest. <laughs> okay, so but that's not funny because it's, okay, uh, there were a lot of hurricanes and storms this year, and uh, there was a lot of damage to people's roofs. And uh, insurance companies were hiring a bunch of people so they could send them out to get the estimates and stuff uh, from the customers. Just pulling people from wherever they could get them. And there was a 20-year-old girl that she had just came out of college. She was actually still in college. Okay. And uh, she started working with this company. And uh, they sent her out when she had a list of homes she had to go to to get the information from. And her last one for the night, it was about 6 o'clock at night, she couldn't find it. So she called her her friend at work and the friend map quested it for. And then when she gets there, the last thing she said to her friend was, Oh, I think I'm here. Somebody's coming up to the car. And that's the last words this poor girl ever, ever said. They found her like three or four days later in the river that was behind that house. She was at, uh, maybe a mile down from the house, uh, dead of course. And they, um, they had went to talk to the last place she'd went to where, you know, her address. And there was new, a, a couple had just moved in there um, they were young and they were, he was 23 and she was like 22. And, uh, the, uh, woman was at work that day, but the guy said he was out jet skiing on the river. And so he had an, they had alibis, but, um, they found the car like the day after they found the body, like a mile away at some uh, bar in the parking lot. And when they looked in the car, they, uh, the trunk, they, they thought she was going to be in there, but they found right. her purse that was empty. So all her credit cards and stuff were gone. <clears throat> well, they track, they go to track her credit cards to see if, if any of them been used. And, and of course, one of them had been used at a grocery store, not far from there. And, uh, so they went in to talk to and the clerk that had done the transaction said she remembered the guy. And he said it was his daughter's credit card, which is weird to me. Cause he was only 23. How would he have a daughter old enough to have a credit card? Right. And, but this, uh, so they looked at the receipt and the guy, it was her credit card, Christine. I can't remember her last name, Christine, 
But the guy had signed his name to her credit card. And that's how he got caught. And that's how they caught him. And it did happen to be the renter. Yeah, it was the renter, the guy who said he was jet skiing mm. that day. He still to this day, though, is in. I listen to forensic files every night for four hours in my truck while I'm working because there's nothing else to listen to. And I just thought, I was thinking to myself, that's the dumbest fucking. Th- These people are idiots. Well, you, you hear stuff like that all the time. Maybe not as, as grotesque and, you know. It's hard. Now we're all terrible, somber. terrible as that. But you, you hear this stuff all the time. We live in we live in Dayton, Ohio, which is the crossroads of America. You know, the two main interstates in the United States is Interstate 70. It goes north to south or east to west and Interstate 75. It goes north to south. They cross in Dayton, Ohio. And you hear stories all the time of people getting pulled over on the interstate around here with hundreds of pounds of marijuana or this drug or that drug or sex trafficking or people trafficking or whatever. And they get pulled over for things like broken taillight, um, no license plate light, tailgating, tailgating, speeding, If I got changing lanes without a signal. If I got 48 pounds of fentanyl in my trunk, I'm not speeding. I'm not tailgating. All my fucking lights are working. Yeah. I'm nervous as fuck and I'm sweating balls. It just goes to show you that how stupid criminals can be. I'm sweating ball salsa. Sweating ball salsa. I think that's a good place to end it. That's the name of the podcast. Sweating ball salsa. I almost want to create a salsa brand and name it Sweating Ball Salsa. Sweating balls. Oh All right, guys. God. Thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. I hope you like this YouTube video. Um, if you've not tried it yet, check out Iron Maiden's Robinson's Trooper Beer. It's a decent English mild. It's nothing special. It actually, it grew on me. It's not that bad. No, it's if not you like bad. like Bud Light and stuff like that, you'll definitely like this beer. I don't think people that are infatuated with Bud Light would like this beer. Okay. If you like Miller Light. It's got Miller too much Light. flavor. But uh, Thanks, guys, for stopping by. We appreciate it. Look for this video to be on YouTube probably in the next 48 to 72 hours or something like Week, that. Two weeks. Um. You know our you know our social media. Hit us up. Send us some emails. Brothers underscore and underscore beer at yahoo.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Play. Hey, I just want everybody to know we appreciate all of our listeners. Everybody that listens and watches. Thank you very much. Have a good night.